Monkeys and coconuts. Monkeys and coconuts. Yeah. So this is, this is an old problem that was set by a guy called Ben Amos Williams in uh, the Saturday Evening Post in the, in the 1920s. They were inundated with uh, frustrated readers, and desperate to know the answer, couldn't work it out. In fact, the, the editor at the time, who's a guy called George Horace Lorimer, I think more people should be called Horace nowadays. George Horace Lor Lorimer uh, wrote to Williams, who'd set the problem, and was like, you know, for the love of Mike, what's the answer? I don't know why I use Mike, but <laughs> okay. It was also popularised by, by Martin Gardner later on. Uh, it's one of his problems. Uh, but yeah, so I thought, I thought we, could, we could talk about the monkey and the coconut problem. So basically, the story goes that you've got five sailors and they're shipwrecked on a desert island and there's a monkey as well. And they go around and they collect a bunch of coconuts and then they go to sleep. In the middle of the night, one of them wakes up, he's looking at the coconuts, he thinks there's going to be trouble in the morning, so he goes over and he starts separating them out, you know, amongst the five sailors. And then there's one left over. She chucks to the monkey who's watching the whole thing, right? He stashes his pile, hides it, and then puts the rest together, puts it back in the middle. So then the next sailor wakes up and he hasn't realised what's happened, he does the same thing. Okay, so he stashes a pile, gives one to the monkey, and then puts the rest together. And then the next sailor wakes up, and he hasn't realised, he does the same thing. Each time the monkey gets one, but the pile of course is getting smaller, and smaller, and smaller, and smaller. Anyway, come morning time, all the sailors have done this. The pile's got pretty rubbish by this stage, and they all realise that there's, there's been a bit of naughtiness going on in the middle of the night, but none of them say anything, because they're all feeling guilty. So then they just go ahead and they, they separate the pile and it goes evenly five ways. Okay, and the monkey doesn't get one this time. So then the question is, how many coconuts were there to begin with? Probably people should pause at this point and go away and try to calculate it. So the answer is... Do we move the drum roll, please? Right, 3,121. Okay, <laughs> now that's... Seems a bit unsatisfactory. So, so why is that the answer? So to try and understand where this number comes from, we're going to begin by trying to solve a slightly easier problem. Okay, and the problem we're going to solve is, in the scenario we described, the monkey didn't get one on the, in the final separation, right? Now we're going to say he does. Here's what's going on, right? So you start off with some coconuts. Let's call it C0, the original amount of coconuts. And what happens to your C0? Well, you give one to the monkey, okay? and the rest gets separated five ways. So each pile contains S1. What does S stand for? Just That's just the number in, 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 in the piles when you do the first separations. Okay, and one for the monkey. Then that first sailor takes his pile, hides it. How many coconuts are you left with? Well, you're left with four S1, right? Because there's four piles left. Then that four gets separated. One gets given to the monkey, and the rest go five ways. In this case, it continues all the way down, right? Okay, because at each stage, even the very last stage, the monkey gets one. So on the final separation, we have the following. So the fifth pile has four times S5. And this one, again, will go five ways with the one left for the monkey. So this is the sort of, you know, the problem. What you're really after is this number C0, which is just the original number of, uh, of coconuts. So we want to relate this guy to this guy. And we end up with the following equation, which, as I'm going to write it, is not particularly illuminating, but let me just write it anyway. Where did that come from? You've got a bunch of equations here, and you can just eliminate, say, from these two equations, you could eliminate S1, and then give yourself C0 in terms of S2, and then you keep iterating that process, and you end up with this equation, okay? I'm right. taking your word for it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tedious. This is an example of a linear Diophantine equation. It's got... It's a linear equation and it's got, it's Diophantine because we're looking for integer solutions. These guys have got to be integers. Now there are standard uh, methods for solving these kinds of things you know, laid down by Euclid. There is an ingenious solution to this problem, which, which I particularly like. It's sometimes attributed to Dirac, the great Dirac. He himself sort of tried to deny that, that he'd come up with it. He said he got it from a guy called Whitehead. So it's not clear where the, where the original solution came from, but Anyway, Dirac seems to be the first point of contact for this. The idea is to consider negative coconuts. Let's let me just rewrite this equation a little bit. So this first number here, this 1024, is actually 4 to the power of 5. Okay, this is just useful to, to know, to see some structure in the equation. This number here is 5 to the power of 6, and this number here 
is 5 to the 6 minus 4 to the 6. So you can check that they happen to be the same numbers. And of course, it's related to the 4s and the 5s that are in the original problem. So the first thing you notice about this equation is it has a symmetry. What you can notice is if I take a C0, if I have some solution C0 of this equation, if I happen to know a solution, and I shift it by 5 to the 6, and at the same time I shift the S6 by 4 to the 5, it will still be a solution. Yeah, you can see that. Just add 5 to the 6 to C0, you get, then you get a correction on this side of 4 to the 5 times 5 to the 6. And if you add 4 to the 5 to S6, you get a correction of 5 to the 6 times 4 to the 5. The equation is still solved. Okay, so all I need to know is find one solution, then I'll have an infinite number. I just keep adding these values and I, I still have solutions. So actually there's an infinite number of solutions to this problem. If there is one, there is an infinite number. So all I have to do is come up with one. And it doesn't matter if it's made out of negative or positive coconuts. All I do is I just get the, the negative value and I keep adding this until I get the first positive value. That's the idea. And then you see it's really easy to find a, an, an answer with negative coconuts. You just rearrange the equation slightly. Bring this 4 over to this side, okay, and then do a little manipulation. You should be able to convince yourself that this equation now holds. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken this 5 to the 6 and factored it out. And I've taken this 4 to the 6 over and I've again factored it out a factor of 4 to the 5. Now it's easy to spot a solution to this equation now. Can you spot it, Brady? No. It's easy. Come on. No chance. Just make both sides naught. Okay, if you make both sides naught, then that corresponds to C naught is equal to minus 4 and S6 is equal to minus 1. That's, of course, minus 4 coconuts, which is ridiculous. But it can see it makes sense, actually. The thing about what happens if you start with minus 4 coconuts. Minus 4 coconuts, give one to the monkey, how many have you got? Minus 5. <laughs> minus 5 divides equally between 5. So each pile then has minus one coconuts in it. Four of them get put into the next batch. So you have minus four in the next batch. And the process is just, it's sort of, you know, it's the same at each stage. So this is why minus four works. But of course, who has minus four coconuts? So the answer is just to add five to the six. Because remember, it, I can just add five to the six to any answer. And it gives me another answer. The smallest positive integer answer is, of course, five to the six minus four, which is in this case, 15, 6, 2, 1. Okay, so that's the solution to the simpler problem. Okay. It's a bigger number. It's a bigger number. Well, the monkey's getting more coconuts this time, right? But actually, it's, it's kind of weird. The monkey gets one more coconut, and, you, and yet he ends up, you need 12,000 more, more coconuts to begin with. It's kind of crazy. So now let's just think about the original problem that we, we wanted to solve. And the idea is, is fairly similar, except you need some blue coconuts. Blue coconuts. You need some blue coconuts, yeah. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take our original pile, but what we're going to do is we're going to add four blue coconuts to the pile. And you forget about mm -hmm. the monkey. So now, what happened was, you've got your warm coconut that you gave to the monkey in the original problem, but now you're going to put that with the four blue coconuts. That makes five. That splits evenly between five. So this is where the trick comes in. So what you do is, add four blue coconuts, forget the monkey, mm -hmm. The first sailor wakes up in the night, splits them five ways, puts one blue coconut on four piles, four different piles, keeps the blue free pile for himself and stashes it. Now the problem is very simple. First stage, it just splits five ways. Okay? And then you go to the next stage. And these, you lose one pile, so it goes down to four. And then you split that one five ways. Now what you can clearly see as, as you're doing this is that the pile of total number of coconuts, blue and, or, and ordinary ones, is depleting by four-fifths at each stage. That seems clear, right? These are tildes. So by the time you've got to the last step, the pile of coconuts gets depleted by four-fifths to the power of five because you've done five steps. But these aren't actually the, the amount of coconuts that we want, okay? This, is, this isn't quite the number. You know, we want the untilded numbers. So the first step, this, this number here, this C0 tilde, is of course C0 plus 4. This C5 tilde, which is C5 plus 4, okay, which is the number of uh, coconuts that you ended up with. Now this number here is a multiple of 5, right? Because remember, 
in the original story laid down by Williams, the last pile really does split amongst five people and there's not one left over for the, for the monkey. So this should be a multiple of five, so let me just call that 5n. So this is now the problem that you're looking at. So let me rearrange it slowly, let me write it as 5 to the 5, 5n plus 4, just multiplying through by this 5 to the 5, 4 to the 5, c0 plus 4. And now again, I've got a, a linear Diophantine equation again. I can, I could use the, the standard methods, blah, 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 but I'm not going to do that. We're going to be clever about it. Let me just call this number, uh, well, I, I mean, I know what I called it. I called it C5 tilde, okay? And this is C0 tilde. So now, I, if I'm looking for integers, I know that C5 tilde and C0 tilde are integers. They certainly are. If I find a solution C0 tilde, then I can certainly add to it 5 to the 5. And similarly to C5 tilde, I can always add to that 4 to the 5, by the same logic as in the previous case. I go for the easiest case that C0 tilde and C5 tilde are both 0 to solve this equation. Now, is that a good solution? Okay, so let's see. If C5 tilde is 0, that implies that n is minus 4 fifths, which is not so good because that's not an integer. Okay, so that hasn't worked. So then we go to our next solution, which is, of course, C5 tilde. We just have to have 4 to the 5 to it. 4 to the 5. Okay, now this is good because that implies that n is equal to 4 to the 5 minus 4 divided by 5, if you rearrange this equation. So that is, I think, 204. So that is an integer solution. So this guy works. So we just have to work out what the corresponding C0 is. The corresponding C0 tilde is 0 plus 5 to the 5. So it's 5 to the 5. So C0 tilde is 5 to the 5, which means that C0 is 5 to the 5 minus 4, which is 3, 1, 2, 1. Do you ever want to know about how many coconuts you need to feed you, the uh, shipwreck guys and the monkeys. There you go, job done. Look, you did it on the back of an envelope. Literally, our uh, front of an envelope, isn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, <anyway. laughs> so there you go, it's quite, quite, you know, it's just a bit of fun, a one of these recreational maths problems, but... Um, Do you think that was really simple? Um, I mean, it was never going to be simple because at the end of the day, uh, you know, it had people crying left, right and centre to the Saturday evening post, uh, begging them for the solution, but uh, there it is.